Uh, the chair will now recognize the ranking member of the full committee, the well-dressed man from New Jersey, Mr. Pallone, for five minutes. <laughs> Thank you for your comments on my jacket. <laughs> anyway, um, Last month, the NRC's commissioners testified before the subcommittee when I asked Chairman Hansen and then Commissioner Barron about the potential for NRC to establish an office of public participation similar to that at FERC. Both of them indicated that they thought it was a good idea and they'd support it. And we have Congressman Levin's bill before us today that would require the NRC to establish a similar office. Uh, so two, two years ago, the NRC created also an environmental justice review team to review how the agency's programs, policies, and activities address environmental justice, and the resulting assessment made six formal recommendations, including that the NRC enhance its environmental justice-related outreach activities, and that the Commission implement formal mechanisms to enhance how environmental justice is addressed. So let me, I have two questions, of maybe two minutes each here, if you will. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dorman, could you talk about how the NRC is implementing those recommendations in both, you know, and, and how the potential Office of Public Participation might be able to help with the environmental justice? And talk a little bit about where the NRC staff currently sees gaps in the Commission's process in engaging communities impact, impacted by NRC's decisions. Two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Ranking Member Pallone. We, we have uh, stakeholder confidence as one of the goals in our strategic plan, and it is uh, dispersed by project, I would say, through the organization. We have agreement state officers and, and state liaison officers in our regional offices. Uh, we have a tribal program in our materials program office. Um, so it, I, I think uh, an, an office such as proposed by Congressman Levin uh, could potentially integrate that and bring focus. Um, but, but stakeholder engagement and stakeholder confidence is, is an important strategic goal of the, of the commission, and, and the staff is focused on that every day. We have over 1,000 public meetings a year. Um, and then um, do you, what about implementing the recommendations on environmental justice? Those recommendations will still sit with the commission, so we're awaiting commission direction on that. Okay. All right, so let me... Let me go to um, Dr. Goff. When Secretary Granholm appeared before the subcommittee, she expressed conditional support for a ban on Russian uranium if we could develop our own nuclear fuel cycle supply chain. So do you agree with Secretary Granholm that if we're going to ban imports of Russian uranium, it's important we also ensure our nation has the fuel cell, the fuel cycle infrastructure needed to support our nuclear power reactors and can you talk about the benefits that the department sees in a program to ensure fuel security, such as the one authorized in the Nuclear Fuel Security Act that we have before us today? Yes, I, I of course agree with the secretary in this case that you know the you, you need to have both of those things moving forward. You know, it's hard to put a ban in place and not have something also to make sure that we're incentivizing the replacement. You know, right now. We don't have enough uh, enrichment capacity outside of Russia to support the Russia re reactors operating outside of Russia. So we've got to make sure we add new capacity. We have things that can make sure we have fuel for the existing fleet for year, you know, a few years to come here, but at some point in the near future, there will be a gap. So you need to make sure that we are incentivizing that new capacity at the same time if you are trying to do a, a ban. They need to come hand hand in hand. Uh, so at what point um, would we be able to say there should be an absolute ban because we have the capacity? Well, you could go ahead. If you start working forward, I mean, it's going to take a certain number of years to deploy new capacity, four years, five years, something along those lines. Um, so, yeah, once you have actions moving forward to have that new capacity be built out, then yeah, you could you know, look, a ban would not negatively impact the continued operation of the reactors. And, um, I, you know, I, haven't, I, don't, I haven't looked at the details of the bill, but would this bill allow for that transition? I, I believe it allows for you know, waivers for a certain period of time as well, that you know, someone, the, the secretary could give waivers for material to come in during that period of transition. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 